Have you ever noticed that the life of the party is usually the person who can make others laugh? You can tell that everyone's eyes are just glued to this person. They're holding on to every single word that they say. Meanwhile, you're sitting on the sidelines in awe, watching all of this happen. You're probably puzzled as to how they're doing it. You're most likely even feeling a bit jealous because a part of you wants to become this person as well. Look, I'm sure you're great and all, but if you don't know how to joke around, your conversations most likely sound very stale. As a result, people aren't always engaged when they're around you. And if this keeps happening, you might miss out on opportunities to create meaningful connections with others. If all of this sounds familiar to you, there's a reason why. It's because I've been in your exact same situation in the past. Growing up in a traditional Asian family, I was conditioned to focus on academic success above everything else. In fact, my parents often discouraged me from going to parties, so I had more time to study. They wanted me to just stay at home so I wouldn't get distracted. I knew they meant well, and they had my best intention in mind. So I followed their advice blindly, and I never questioned it. Looking back now, I realized what a mistake that was. Sure, I did really well in school. In fact, I landed a high-paying job in a prestigious engineering company right after I graduated. But when it came to my dating and social life, I was failing miserably. Because I never paid attention to it when I was younger, I really struggled socially as an adult. It wasn't until I learned that you can develop a sense of humor that my situation changed. Personally, I was really glad to know that because being funny didn't come naturally to me. That's why today, I'm going to teach you five jokes that will make people like you instantly. Also, make sure you pay attention to my third tip because that's a mistake that you'll want to avoid at all costs. Tip number one is to respond unexpectedly. When you find something funny, it's usually because it was unpredictable, right? That's why the element of surprise is a key component to improving your sense of humor. An easy way to implement this during your interaction is to do the opposite of what people are expecting. For example, the next time you tell a story, lead it up one way as you're building it up, and then flip the ending to be something completely different. The further the conclusion is from what people expect, the funnier it becomes. To make this work, you have to structure your stories to make it sound more engaging. The first thing that you want to do is to set it up well. Give some background information and create contrast whenever possible. And then use specific details to captivate the senses and create anticipation. Lastly, release the tension that you've built up when you finally deliver the punchline of the joke. Also, make sure you're smiling and you have an easygoing tone when you do this. You'll want to make it obvious to whoever you're talking to that you're just messing around. If you're not used to doing any of this, it might feel unnatural for you at first. That's why you'll want to prepare ahead of time. What you'll want to do is to write out your jokes and try recording yourself telling them. That way, you can observe yourself and make improvements accordingly. Tip number two is to tell a personal story. When something makes us laugh, it's typically something we can all relate to. That's why you shouldn't be afraid to be vulnerable. The next time you talk to someone, feel free to open up and share details about yourself. I know for me, some of the most embarrassing moments in my life are now part of my funniest material. When you're able to make fun of yourself, it shows others that you don't take yourself too seriously. Not to mention, when you make yourself the subject of the joke, there's a less chance that you'll offend someone. That being said, there's a fine line between self-deprecating humor and putting yourself down to get sympathy. The first one makes you more relatable, while the second one lowers your status. So how do you do it the right way? Ideally, you'll make a joke about something that you've already overcome. Also, make sure it's something that the other person can relate to as well. To give you an example from my own life, I have a lot of friends that are in great shape. Before I got into fitness, I used to be massively overweight as a teenager. Back then, I tipped the scale at 200 pounds and had a 36 inch waist. Obviously these days, things have changed. I'm in the best shape of my life and I feel good about my body. In this case, it would be okay to make jokes about my fitness journey around my fitness friends. It's something that's personal yet relatable. And it's definitely something that we can all laugh at. What you don't want to do is to joke around with an issue that you're still dealing with. For example, let's say you've been single for a while now. You haven't had a lot of luck in dating and you're starting to feel pretty lonely. That wouldn't be something I would joke about since it'll come across more sad than funny. Do you see the difference now? Again, whatever you do, Avoid oversharing, especially with people you don't know well yet. They may get the wrong impression of you, and it could turn the interaction awkward real fast. Tip number three is to try using puns. Typically, people find it amusing when there is a gap between the words that are being used and the meaning behind them. That's why using puns is an easy way to get a laugh. Personally, I like to use this type of humor with someone I just met. It's pretty low risk and easy to implement. 
The key here is to be observant, imaginative, and be knowledgeable on various topics. For this to work, you have to make time to read more consistently. You'll also have to break your routine every now and then so you can do novel activities. If you think about it, you'll have a hard time being creative if you do the same things over and over again, right? Personally, I love listening to audiobooks. It's a great way to consume valuable and potentially life-changing information during your downtime. This will help you make the most out of running errands, cleaning your place, or during your commute. That being said, to help you think outside of the box, you'll also have to get good at making associations. You can do this by picking an object that you see often, and then ask yourself what else it reminds you of. If you're someone who tends to be very technical and logical, then this is something that you should do more often. This exercise will help you loosen up mentally, especially after a long day of sitting in front of the computer. If you do this long enough, you'll be able to come up with different ways of describing usual things. Tip number four is to borrow from other people. Building confidence in any area of your life starts with being competent first. And then, you need to be able to gather positive reference experiences through consistent wins. Just think of the way you learned how to drive your car. You probably took some lessons at first, right? And then, you started cruising around empty parking lots and less busy roads to practice. These days, I'm sure you can listen to music, drink coffee, and drive without even thinking about it. The same ideas apply if you want to improve your sense of humor. If you're not a naturally funny person, spend some time learning it by watching comedy shows and stand-up routines. When you do, observe what kind of humor makes you laugh. Notice the little nuances by paying attention to the timing and delivery of the joke. And then, do your best to integrate what you'll learn during your next interaction. If you want, you can even borrow other people's jokes for now. By doing so, you'll see what works very quickly. You'll get a positive reaction from others right away. This will encourage you to keep going until you're able to come up with your own material. Tip number five is to always be respectful. Standing at 5'5 five, five and being a person of color, I used to be the butt end of short and racist jokes back in the day. Not knowing any better, I was spending too much time with the wrong crowd when I was younger. That being said, if you want to know how to tell jokes that make people like you, you have to be empathetic. At the end of the day, Bantering with others is supposed to enhance your interactions with them. So before you say anything, put yourself in the other person's situation. If you were them, would you like to be on the receiving end of the joke that you're about to make? If not, then it's best to remain quiet and just keep to yourself. Remember, improving your sense of humor should never be at the expense of others. That's why whatever you do, never poke fun of people's insecurities, especially physical attributes that they can't do anything about. That's just mean and totally uncalled for. Again, in order to succeed socially, treat others the way you also want to be treated. Be lighthearted during your interactions and always be respectful. That being said, if you don't have a good read on the person you're talking to, try to have a casual conversation first. To help you out, I made a free social confidence cheat sheet that you can download in the description below. By making small talk, you'll be able to gather relevant information. This will help you understand the other person better and you'll be able to tell jokes in a way that both of you will enjoy. If you're tired of struggling socially and you want to learn more about our social skills coaching program, book your free consultation today and let's connect. The link is in the description below as well. If you would like to know how to improve your sense of humor even more, then make sure you watch this next video. That's actually where I give you my best tips on how to be witty in conversation. By the end of it, you'll be able to banter better with others. So again, make sure you check it out.